Gluten Morgan, everyone. Let's talk about oven spring. Does every loaf of bread have to have an ear? What are they listening to? Why do they sometimes get an incredible oven spring and many other times they remain flat as a frisbee? What does it depend on then? On the tools that we use. What? On the sourdough starter. Maybe the oven. So that is what I am going to do today. I will do all kinds of tests to see what we should or what we shouldn't do to get the best oven spring. So if you like, let's get started and may the gluten be with us. If there's one thing that worries every single home baker is the fact that once the bread hits the oven, it won't spring and it won't get that air that we all strive for. However, things won't always go as planned. There is no better feeling than when things are going according to our plan. You can see it on my face, can you? Oh, look at that ear. Once the bread hits the oven, the die has been cast and it no longer depends on us. We will have to wait until we open the oven door and find out how things turn out. Wow. Luckily, the gluten was by our side this time. Let's get back to basics, which is simply baking some bread. Let's pretend we know nothing about bread making and let's bake this loaf of bread without doing any scoring. Let's just put it in the oven. No artisan steam. And let's see what happens. May the gluten be with you. Well, it looks like the gluten didn't make it in time. But we did this for the baking good. And what's going on here? When we put the bread into the oven without any type of tin, it dried immediately and it created the crust. On the inside, the crumb was totally uncooked, looking for any direction to expand. It didn't find any place to burst, so it ended up breaking one of its sides. And if we cut it, this is the crumb we're going to find. Well, it's airy at least. The loaf is not perfect because it wasn't able to grow properly. Let's begin test number two, which will be pretty familiar to the one we did before. But in this case, we're going to score the loaf and see what happens. Are you ready? Let's go to the oven. We are not using any steam. See you soon. And we're back. It doesn't have an ear either. What happened here was that the scoring helped a bit to expand. But since there was no steam, the crust developed really fast. And that is why it has no ear. Right now we can see this loaf of bread is halfway through getting where we want it. It is flat and it has no ear. Let's begin the next test. Here's our loaf ready to be baked. Let's place it on top of the peel. This time we are going to bake it with steam. So let's score it all the way through. That's a nice scoring. Oh yeah. Let's take it to the oven. This is a convection oven, so we should turn the fan off. If we don't turn it off, the steam would dissipate and it would be as if we were baking it without it. Now that the bread is on the baking steel, let's make some artisan steam. We are adding a bit of water on a tray underneath. This is going to help to create a humid environment, which will help our loaf to grow, expand and develop that incredible ear we're looking at. Isn't it amazing when things go as planned? Let's enjoy this loaf which is pretty sexy. Now let's talk about of one of my favorite making methods, the Dutch oven. And here we're going to place our loaf. As a reminder, you should always preheat the Dutch oven with the oven too. Once again, we're going to score the loaf, but this time around we're going to put on the lid and we're going to leave it like this for 20 minutes. What's going to happen is that the water that evaporates from the loaf will remain inside the Dutch oven and that's going to avoid it from dry. It will grow, expand and create that incredible ear we are hoping to see. Oh, lots of steam. Now let's remove the lid. We're going to bake it like this for another 20 minutes. And here it is. Now we are going to use another method that is pretty similar to the one we used before. Instead of using a Dutch oven, we are going to use this oven plastic bag. And we are going to do the same thing. Score it and now into the plastic bag it goes. Perfect. We have to close it so the steam won't dissipate and we take it to the preheated oven. The process is very similar to the Dutch oven. The water from the loaf will evaporate and the plastic bag will keep them enclosed. This will help the loaf to expand and rise up freely. After 20 minutes we have to carefully remove the plastic bag and all that's left to do is. And then we take it back into the oven so it gets that nice and rich golden color. And here it is. Perfect. Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home? Then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread 
just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter, how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread, how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it and click the link on the description right now. Something really important to take into account when you're going to make bread wow. is to check on our sourdough starter activity. It needs to be super active, creamy and full of bubbles like the one I'm showing. Oh, bubbles. On the contrary, if you haven't used your sourdough starter for a long time, or you haven't fed it, or not refresh it, and it even has this mysterious liquid on top, kind of scary, isn't it? Haha, <laughs> there are a few more. Why aren't they getting fed? The thing is, if you don't refresh your sourdough starter ahead of time before using it, or it's not active enough, and you use it anyway, the result will look something like this. Damn, that's a flatbread. And the ear, where did it go? Well, this time around, we had steam, but we still have no ear. And as a bonus, you get this kind of crumb, known as fool's crumb, also called inexperienced crumb. The answer, as always, it's on the sourdough starter, which is the base of our bread. If you haven't used it for a while, or you have it sitting on the fridge for too long, you have to refresh it and wait until it starts growing again. <laughs> Remember that we are doing it all by the eye. And here in this channel you can watch many videos about this particular topic. And here is another time lapse. Another thing we need to take into consideration is the proofing time, which means the right moment when the bread is ready to be baked. Sometimes it could be underproofed, many other times it could be ready to be baked. Maybe a little bit overproofed. And well, don't even look at this. All right, let's see what happens when we bake a loaf slightly overproofed. Let's unmold it as we did with the rest. We instantly notice that the loaf starts sliding to the side. Now time to score it, cover it with the lid and take it into the oven for 20 minutes. Oh God, please no, I don't want to see it. It was obvious, a flat bread. What happened here is pretty simple. The leavening agents, which fermented for way too long, have eaten all the available sugars. That's why, while it was being baked, they didn't have enough to fit from and the loaf didn't grow and remained flat. We may end up using flour that it's not as strong as we need it to be, and when we mold it, the loaf will end up sliding to the side like a pancake. But that's alright, we're going to bake it anyway, because that's what this test is about. Well, I guess we shouldn't have done that. Let's keep going with the tests. The tool that we use to score the bread is really important. Achieving a good year depends mostly on it. For example, we could use this beautiful lamb made out of olive wood, or this one, although I don't know what type of wood it's made of. We can also use a metallic lamb like this one, which looks more like a scalpel, or the plastic version, which comes in green, blue, or pink. You can also use a razor blade, but be very careful with it. We can even go as far as using a pair of scissors, or a little one. The one I don't recommend using is a knife. If it's a serrated knife, it's a no, and this one either. Mm, let's pretend we didn't see this one. Even though we are using the correct tool for scoring, it may happen while we're cutting it that we get stuck halfway through it, and we might end up with an ear that looks like this. However, if we use the incorrect tool for scoring, other things may happen. I don't recommend that you look at it, or maybe with one eye closed. <laughs> yeah, we apply too much pressure to score it with a knife, so we end up degassing the whole loaf. It's totally flat, but let's bake it, shall we? In another video, because I don't dare to show it. I hope you have discovered and resolved most of your baking problems. Now you won't have flatbreads anymore, and they will have incredibly beautiful ears. And remember, may the gluten be with you. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.